The next morning leaving Fairbanks, we decided that we were going to go to Anchorage. I'd called and I'd reserved a hotel room and we were going to see uh, Denali National Park and we were going to see Mount McKinley. And it was going to be awesome because it was going to be the scenic part of Alaska that I really wanted to see. Morning, Trace. Morning, Billy. What are you doing? Programming today's destination. Yep. And getting eaten by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes here are no mosquitoes joke. Are no joke. Uh, we had an R and R day in Fairbanks yesterday. We just totally vegged. We did a few bike-related maintenance things. We had to wash them. They were nasty. It doesn't really look like it. Doesn't whatever. look like it. We're still gross, and we've taken numerous baths. Every time we touch the bike, it just rubs. It just falls off on you. Not a pleasant thing at all. It's just, no, it's just, we're gonna, I'm gonna have this crap on. We're gonna have this crap on us for two months. I promise you. Yeah, easy. It's but, disgusting. Yeah. <sighs> Today uh, we're gonna go south. We're gonna go to Anchorage. Uh, we're gonna check out Mount McKinley, which is my namesake mountain, on the way. And by the time we roll out of Anchorage tomorrow, back to British Yukon Territory, British Columbia, somewhere in there, Yukon Territory, I guess it is. We will have covered almost all of the major highways in Alaska. So we'll have done the Grand Loop and seen just about everything we can that doesn't involve more dirt roads, which we really don't care to see anymore. Mm -mm. So we did a thousand miles of dirt. We're, we're staying on pavement. We're staying on pavement. So it's going to be a good day. We're going to have a lot of fun. we got some beautiful scenery uh, to the south, so we're really looking forward to it. So yep. What is, are we hoping for today that we never pray for? Rain. 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 <laughs> this is one of the weirdest things ever, but we are hoping for about an hour of torrential downpour rain to the try to... need to be cleaned. Uh, we took these things and we spent about ten dollars and quarters at the car wash and it still didn't even put a dent on it nope. all it did was uh not that we care what they look like and that's not that i want to make that very 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 clear that i thought this thing looked badass dirty but the fact is that this stuff is it's a really very fine dust it's almost like almost volcanic in its nature and it gets everywhere it's gritty too even though it's, it's so fine yeah it's and it's it dries your skin out and it's just it's awful so i don't want to even look what it did to my face shield yeah it destroyed trace's face shield yeah. and i just don't want it even touching me because it is every time i load anything on the bike get on the bike get off the bike touch the bike um, i get this this horrible powder thing and it's basically pulling the skin back off my fingernails um, it's everywhere it's in, in my teeth and so we're hoping that we just get rained on just torrential downpour hurricane <laughs> about 38 miles outside of fairbanks we were winding along this twisty mountain road is raining a little bit and this fog was just incredibly thick probably only about 20 feet of visibility is very pea soup thick fog I was in the lead and I was riding along, riding along, riding along and I looked back and Tracy was nowhere to be found. I kept riding and he never showed up. I turned around and about a mile and a half back I noticed him standing there on the side of the road on a bike and his rear tire was completely flat and we, I kind of laughed at it because I knew we had all the tools to, to put a new tube in to fix the tire. So I pulled up and I'm laughing in my head but unfortunately looking at the tire the side of the bead had split and the um, the coils inside the belt was actually stabbing into the tube and unfortunately there was no way to um, put a new tube in because it just would have gotten stabbed again <laughs> yeah put your roadside flare down well i can pop that flare if you need me to the fog's starting to clear you need to worry about it right now it's not dark or anything. <gasps> uh, what are you doing there trace Pulling out my tools to take my rear tire off. So we're here in the flat on the George W. Parks Highway, which is nice and paved, but it's foggy and gross. And 30 miles from Fairbanks. 30 miles from Fairbanks, but unfortunately the tire, you, you can't see it, but the, the cords ripped into the tube. And so if we put a new tube on it, all it'll do is uh, shred it. So we've got to pull the rim off. I've got to take my donkey back into Fairbanks 
find a dealership and then hand them the tire and put me a new tire on it. So, wish us luck. We had to make a command decision out in the middle of Alaska and I ended up putting his tire and wheel on my bike. I wanted to document this for all the people that were like, oh, Tracy's such a badass, he rebuilt his bike from scratch. Billy's gonna die up there. But look, look what my donkey's doing. <laughs> I planned for every single possible contingency except for two things. Bad gas and a shredding tire. Yeah. And so we sorted the tire. I can't do a goddamn thing about. <laughs> so I am going to run about mission 30. Mission of mercy. The, by, mission of mercy. <laughs> I'm going to run about 35 miles into town. The uh, the tire actually shredded at the cords. The cords actually poked into the tube. There's nothing we can do about it. If we put a new tube in it, it'll just shred it again. So um, I'm going to run into town here in about 30 minutes and get Tracy a new tire. And I left him there um, on the side of a mountain in Alaska and ran back in Fairbanks to, to get him a tire. Here we are. I never mentioned how much I hate saying that and I hate hearing it. Sometimes it's appropriate. Today it's appropriate. You can see my breath. I feel defeated. I'm tired. I'm angry. I'm pissed. I'm annoyed. I'm ready to go home. I've never in my life felt this way on a B1 trip. This, uh, this has been the hardest thing I've ever done. This trip has taken a lot out of me, mentally. It really has. I'm tired, I'm just mentally exhausted, I'm drained. I know some of you are probably sitting there wondering, but Tracy, why are you sitting on the side of the road, on a guardrail, with traffic coming and going, talking to the camera? Well, I have a good excuse. You see, uh, shit. it's like this. When I bought the KLR for this trip, I took it apart completely, completely rebuilt it from the ground up. Because I wanted to make sure that I did everything I could to ensure that we had a trouble-free trip. So, shouldn't close up to my nose hair. So, I took the thing apart, went through every single system, ordered new tires, put them on myself, blah, 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 blah. So far on this trip, the donkey, my donkey, has had three failures. Number one, in Prudhoe Bay, we had a flat tire on the front. We slimed it and it held. I'm still not convinced that my bike wasn't sabotaged by a rogue security guard that wanted to make sure we didn't sneak out without paying, whatever. Additionally to that, additionally to that, ooh, incoming, Bicyclist almost ran my ass over. <laughs> that would have been pretty bad. Bad end of the trip, you're run over by three road bicyclists. Anyway, it's raining now again. It's misty and foggy and nasty up here. Failure number two. Yeah, I was telling you about failures, wasn't I? Failure number two was Bad gas in Prudhoe Bay. Sorry, I got the extreme close-up thing going on. Let me come over here. My left hand's getting tired for a bit. Had bad gas in Prudhoe Bay. Got water in it, I guess. Or the gas had water in it that I, we paid five ten a gallon for. I think it was or five thirty-nine. I honestly don't remember. It was a lot of money. But we paid eight bucks a gallon in Canada, so I can't holler. It was relatively cheap comparatively. Then that happened. Uh, Forty miles north of Coldfoot in the middle of the Alaska wilderness with nothing around. And there we were in three inch thick mud. It was gross, it was nasty, I it was covered in mud. My suit was covered in mud, the bike was covered in mud. I'm having to work on it, I pulled the fuel tank off, drained the carburetor, checked the spark plug, checked the air filter, made sure that nothing was gunked up, and finally came to the realization it was just shit in the carburetor. So I drained the flow bowl, we cranked it, she finally came to life, and it's been fine since. Then, that brings us to failure number three. Failure number three is the one thing, the one thing that I didn't count on and that I,
I'd be stuck out here. If one if it weren't for Villa being here, I'd be hosed. Because there's no cell service up here. We're 35 miles west and southish of Fairbanks. I kind of like this view. It gives you that humble thing going on. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm humble now. Maybe I was a little cocky before. I don't know. I can fix anything. If it has a motor wheels on it, I can fix it. Come on. But, back to the story. With the expectation that I would get a flat and it would be repairable, you know, with a tube, obviously I carried tubes for that reason, or slime, and really carried an air pump. That is the extent of any problems I expected to have related to the uh, rolling portion of the chassis. This is a little hard for me to do. A little hard. A lot of cars are driven by now. A single person stopped to ask if I need help. Um, this is the one thing that I didn't plan for, I didn't count on, and I'd be fucked if Billy wasn't here to help me. It pains me to admit that. It really does. Because <laughs> I like to think there's nothing I can't handle on my own. And I almost did this trip by myself. I was prepared to do it by myself and I fully intended to do it by myself. I did not ask Billy to come with me because I knew this was going to be a very difficult trying taxing trip. He offered, he invited himself, he said, yeah, I'm going with you, I'm not letting you do it alone. I'm glad. I'm glad he came. I wouldn't recommend anybody coming up here by yourself. This is difficult country. It's a difficult place. Uh, if you watch the Ice Road Truckers, Deadliest Catch, that picks up on the high points of the professions that are up here that illustrates that fact. But just in day-to-day -day life, it's a it's a difficult place to be. It really is. But enough about me rambling about philosophical whatever. I am still all that. I just can't shit tires. As soon as a motorcycle rolls by, if we see one, I would bet you $10 that he stops or she stops. To check because that's what we do <sighs> I'm glad I'm not out here by myself kind of I am right now for an hour and a half we're 30 miles from civilization not a huge deal I can call a taxi if I have to I guess but the big thing the big thing is that Billy was here. And he annoys the shit out of me and he has a short temper and he's a pain in my ass a lot of times. Don't think he's not. We've been friends for 20 plus years and we annoy each other equally. But as he commented to me yesterday or the day before, you know, we make a good yin and yang for each other. Uh, when we were on the Dalton, you know, I was pissed, I was mad, I was frustrated that my bike died in the mud. It was nasty. And, I, and he's just like, dude, calm down. I'm like, I'm calm, I'm just pissed. I can be calm and pissed. But uh, he did a good job of bringing me down. He really did. You know, because when you're up there, you're thinking, how the fuck am I going to get home? What's wrong with the bike? What am I going to do? What if I'm stuck here? You know, what if you never see this video? 